All right, welcome everybody to the salmon exhibit here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. We will be starting the feeding in just a moment here. Once the fish gets settled in, you can see they're very excited. So give us just a minute to get our audio set up and we'll be launching live in just a moment here. Hello, uh, this is Leo. I'll be the aquarist today feeding the salmon. Um, in just a moment here, we will be feeding them uh, brine shrimp today. Uh, um, all right, so uh, today we're going to, oh, pardon me. Uh, um, all right, so today our meal is uh, Pacifica Krill. So uh, if you want to come around and join me at our first exhibit here, this is uh, one of our two freshwater exhibits here at the uh, Alaska Sea Life Center. And uh, this is where all the fingerlings or the uh, juvenile uh, salmon are. So I'm going to come around behind the back with my Pacifica Krill. And I'm going to be feeding them a little bits of food at a time. And that's how much we'll be feeding them today. I just want to make sure that I feed them the appropriate amount, not uh, too much, so that they float to the bottom and they just, you know, food goes to waste, as well as me having to do extra work and actually cleaning it. Um, and not too little, so that, you know, they just stay alive. Uh, so um, over here we have the uh, freshwater stream. And these are also all coho salmon. We've only seen coho salmon so far. And um, they actually look a little unfamiliar to us, not the traditional salmon look that we're familiar with, because they, the salmon we see actually uh, look like what they need to in the ocean. Uh, they have to blend into that kind of environment, whereas these guys, they uh, are born and raised in freshwater streams, so they have to be able to blend into that kind of environment. That's why they have these vertical bars uh, that helps them um, blend into the kind of sticks and rocks in that kind of environment. So what are they hiding from? There's uh, predatory birds, uh, gulls, and ducks, as well as uh, predatory fish like Dolly Parton and um, rainbow trout. Uh, these fish also, um, today we're gonna be feeding them uh, Pacifica krill as well, but in the wild, they'll be feeding on uh, aquatic invertebrates like insects that you know, swim around in the water as well as insects that kind of float on top. 
Um, but yeah, today they'll get some more uh, Pacifica Krill. So at this stage, at this juvenile stage, um, it, de it depends on the salmon, but uh, they can be up in this uh, freshwater stream for from that ranges from about a few months to years. Um, in terms of coho salmon, they'll spend about two years uh, living around this environment before they start making their way down to uh, our next environment, uh, the estuary. And it's actually about this time of the year where they'll start traveling downstream um, and the first major kind of difference that they'll encounter, uh, different kind of environment they'll encounter is the estuary. So estuaries are a really dynamic and really unique environment because they're constantly changing um, in terms of salinity, especially because you know there's uh, freshwater runoffs uh, from streams as well as rising and fallings of tides that you know can increase or decrease salinity. So it's a different kind of environment that they, uh, from other environments actually. Uh, so right now I'm feeding them silver sides. See them, they're pretty aggressively eating. <laughs> I would just completely cover them in salt water now. Um, so actually salmon don't spend that much time in the estuaries. They just zoom right past it. But the estuary itself is actually pretty neat. It's a, it acts as a nursery for a lot of organisms. Um, and so a lot of baby animals grow up here and then they um, uh, can either stay or move out into the open ocean. And in here is a uh, oddball fish called a staghorn sculpin, which has a special place in my heart. But one of their awesome adaptations is that they are residential creatures. Oh, geez, right underneath the log right there. Uh, they are residents of estuaries, so they are able to tolerate that range of uh, salinity. But uh, here at the aquarium, we don't just toss them into salt water. Uh, we will uh, move them back down into one of our holding tanks and incrementally raise the seawater, uh, the salinity, so it matches more or less to the seawater. Um, but in this tank, it's all uh, that transition has already happened, and so this is always going to be uh, salt water. And so, uh, in the wild, the salmon will zoom past the estuary and move into the open ocean or the uh, schooling tank. And here, uh, we actually have. Uh, two different types of salmon. Uh, we have the coho salmon that we've seen already as well as king salmon. Now, uh, there's lots of differences between kings and cohos. Visually, uh, you could tell the difference between their gums. So, cohos have white gums, whereas kings have darker gums. Um, in terms of the spots, you'll find that they both have spots, but cohos only have spots on their backs, while kings have them on their backs as well as their caudal fin and their dorsal fin. Uh, we're also, uh, you know, their difference also comes in size. So kings that live a little bit longer than uh, coho salmon, and because of that time, uh, they're able to make up, or they're able to eat more during their lifetime. And uh, especially during the summer when it's daylight most of the time, they will eat almost 24/7 and grow to that giant size that we're all familiar with. And um, you know, they, they need to be able to grow that large because when they spawn, they actually have to travel thousands of miles uh, upstream, uh, sometimes all the way up into Canada. And so that's why coho salmon need to be really big and that's why they also taste really good. Whereas uh, other salmon, like king salmon, they only, they'll spawn sometimes a couple hundred yards upstream. So they don't need to be that big. They don't need that large fat reserve to swim uh, to their final destination. So with these fish, I'll be also feeding them silver sides. But uh, as you can see, 
Uh, these ones will be a little bit bigger, and, uh, and they'll be just as feisty or feistier. So again, while I'm feeding them, I'm just keep, kind of uh, keeping an eye out on uh, how much to feed. I want to make sure that uh, I'm feeding at the right pace so that all the fish are able to eat them before they hit the ground. Um, and also trying to avoid being splashed as best as I can. Well, that concludes our uh, salmon feeding. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day.